honored guests. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology's 10th anniversary ceremony. Today's event will be inter interpreted simultaneously. If needed, please plug your earpiece into the armrest and turn the channel to one for English, two for Japanese. My name is Mariko Miyagi. I'm honored to be your MC today. Before we begin, I'd like to ask that you please turn off your phone and give us your full attention. And in the unlikely event of an emergency, we ask that you please proceed quickly and calmly to one of our marked exits. So now let's begin. We are so pleased to open our ceremony with a performance by violinist Eiko Kano, accompanied by pianist Karen Hakovian. Please welcome them onto the stage.
Thank you very much. Please give a big, big round of applause, Ms. Kano and Mr. Hakobino for their wonderful performances. Thank you very much. We are, also, we are so fortunate that the piano used was graciously donated by the Oyster Foundation with the support of Eiko Kano, the Ryuji Ueno Foundation, and the restorer Yu Takagi. We will now be showing a short film introducing the 10-year history of the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. Who would have thought in just 10 years we could achieve all this? OIST is a successful experiment, one that shows the world what is possible when the traditional academic limitations are removed. Here, science can flourish with a crucial combination of cross-disciplinary teams, high trust funding, and the curiosity-driven research that has allowed us to do amazing things in just 10 years. What do I love about Hoist? It's the creativity. The freedom with which we get to pursue our research unimpeded. The community was really warm and welcoming. The facilities were fantastic. There were many opportunities, not just scientifically, but also for personal development. This is one of the best universities in the world, not only just because it looks beautiful, but including the research atmosphere, it's just uh, very hard to believe that a uh, very small university can offer this amazing stuff. So, how did we get here? OIST's story begins in 2001. Koji Omi, in his dual role of Minister of Science and Technology and Minister of State for Okinawa and Northern Territories Affairs, announces a bold new idea. Originally, the policies for Okinawa and for science and technology had no relations to each other. Now that I became the minister of these two seemingly unrelated matters, I wondered how I would fulfill my responsibilities. In my head, I sort of connected the two, and that's how I got the idea to start the University of Science and Technology in Okinawa. With this ambitious vision of creating a new, world-class university, Minister Omi begins consulting the best minds at home and around the world. Remarkable persuasion and persistence sets a grand plan in motion. He is joined by Akito Arima, former University of Tokyo president, former Minister of Education, and longtime champion of reform. An international committee is a symbol that produces a framework for establishment, governance, and accreditation. Joining Koji Omi and Akito Arima are Sidney Brenner, Stephen Chu, Jerome Friedman, Kiyoshi Kurokawa, Yuan T. Lee, Hiroko Sho, Susumu Tonegawa, and Tolsten Wiesel. The new university is to be outstanding in research and academics. It is to be international, cross-disciplinary, focused on independent young researchers, and it is to become the center for innovation in research and development to drive self-sustaining development in Okinawa. A small island at the edge of the Pacific might not be the most obvious choice at first glance, but Okinawa's historical and geographical position at the crossroad of Asia brought centuries of prosperity for the Ryukyu Kingdom. These islands have a proud and unique past. At the start of the 21st century, Okinawa is ideally suited to become a new global hub for research, education, and innovation. The founders recognized the potential for a new university to be a significant new center for Okinawa, Japan, and the world. Many attractive sites in Okinawa are considered for locating the OIST main campus. 
the selected site on the emerald slopes of stately Onnadake, Mount Onna, skirted by a turquoise coral lagoon, has an incomparable natural environment. And with Onna Village's generous decision to provide the land, sufficient for future growth, Oist finds a home. Another key founder, Dr. Sidney Brenner, is selected in 2005 as president of the OIST Promotion Corporation, a transitional organization that will prepare the campus and research units for university accreditation, helping to guide the idea of a cross-disciplinary research space where scientists could be driven by their curiosity. Sydney emphasized the importance of establishing cutting-edge research from the very start. We set up temporary laboratories nearby in Urama City to allow research and recruitment to get underway while the main campus was being built. From the beginning, we implemented the key principles of being cross-disciplinary, with no departments, where even new PIs would independently manage the research and budgets, and research resources would be shared among all the laboratories. Sydney had an extraordinary ability to convey a realistic vision of creating a modern research institution from scratch here in Okinawa. All of the capabilities of the most advanced laboratories were established and accreditation was achieved within an only five years. It was an amazing journey. After an international competition, a group of companies plan a campus for the university of the future. These include renowned laboratory designer Komberg Associates, the leading Japanese architectural firm Nikken Sekkei, and the Okinawan contractor Kuniken. And just a couple of years later, construction of the first labs begins. Inspired in part by rich motifs from Ryukyuan history and from the colors of the Okinawan landscape, the campus design takes shape. A center for learning and innovation combining the best of Okinawan and international sensibilities. I think the most important goal that we saw was their interest in making it interdisciplinary and collaborative. What was different about this was one, we had this beautiful site. And so we approached it as, as architects was, we want to take advantage of the beauty of the site and the natural characteristics of the site. We incorporated some artifacts or, or elements of Okinawa culture. The base of the buildings were built out of the local stone. And that's a very important element as far as what campus buildings sit on and how they're anchored to the, to the landscape. Out of the Okinawan forest, the university's first laboratories emerge. With the opening in March 2010 of Lab 1 and the center building, both beautifully designed with cutting-edge energy efficiency and equipped with the latest technology, the OIST research community on the Onnason campus is launched. A space where scientists from across disciplines and across the world can come together to do groundbreaking research. And in November 2011, with accreditation achieved, OIST Graduate University officially comes into being. It also has a new president. After more than a year of working towards the launch, Dr. Jonathan Dauphin takes the helm. OIST Graduate University will conduct internationally outstanding education and research in science and technology, and thus contribute to the sustainable development of Okinawa and promote the advancement of science and technology in Japan and throughout the world. We believe that education, learning, discovery, and creation of opportunity will bind us together and enable us to collectively build peace and prosperity and to face the challenges of living together on this earth. The vision is in motion. The ball is rolling. Now, it begins to pick up speed. A year later in 2012, Lab 2 is finished adding facilities for physics and chemistry, which greatly expand the scope of the university. 
With the signature sky bridges connecting Lab 2 to Lab 1 in center building, the core campus comes into its own. And in 2012, another major milestone. The first 38 graduate students arrive on campus. OIST has been sort of, you know, instrumental in defining my, my career trajectory. So I came in with a very, very different background and I left with a very, very different background. So, so it, was, it, was, it was kind of a transformation, if you will. The focus is really on the graduate students and it offers more of a designer PhD program where, you know, the, the student is in charge of crafting out what they want to study, who they want to study it with, and uh, really defining what their um, you know, future career would look like. When I did come for the first time, I think the thing that hit me the most was how flexible and how open people were with their science and working between different sections of the university. It felt like a breath of fresh air. I think it's very rare for a research institution to have such a tight knit like community, not only within like a single discipline, but also across many different disciplines. Last summer, I had an opportunity to go back to OIST as a research intern, and it was amazing being able to go back to the place where all my interest in science started and actually doing like research there. As the years roll on, OIST keeps growing. In 2015, completion of Lab 3 expands the research campus again and gives a home to the graduate school and to the technology development and innovation center. The following year sees the completion of the OIST Marine Science Station, a crucial link for ocean research at our island institute. In 2017, OIST appoints its next president, Dr. Peter Gruth. And then in 2018, OIST reaches its next great milestone, the first graduation ceremony. Our first PhD graduates were pioneers. When they decided to come to OIST at the very beginning, we were still untested and unproven. But they saw in us what we saw in them, potential. Together we proved that the OIST way of doing things didn't merely work, it was a pathway to excellence. And each year, with every successive cohort of graduates, we continue to demonstrate to the world what can be achieved when the traditional boundaries for science and technology are taken away. I could not be more pleased with the hard work dedication and excellence of all our graduates. The journey continues, always continues to go from strength to strength. From the opening of the largest lab building yet, climbing the prestigious Nature Index and developing a team that brings together researchers, businesses and investors to promote economic growth and sustainability in Okinawa. Our mission is to remove barriers to empower OI students and researchers to develop their emergent ideas, entrepreneurial skills, and navigate businesses and commercial opportunities for global impact. We bridge the gap between the great science at OIST and the commercial market. We take big ideas, propel them forward, and promote the Okinawan economy. We create strong businesses connections with OIST world-leading cross-disciplinary research to foster innovation and economic opportunities in Okinawa and around the globe. We have created a platform for innovators, businesses and investors to launch new industries from Okinawa that is already contributing to strong, resilient Okinawan society and economy. OIST still has its eyes on the future because we are a work in progress. Like the Ryukyu Kingdom of old, where the world came to meet, trade, and share new ideas, OIST seeks to embrace the Okinawan tradition of openness and internationalism. A champru, a mixture of ideas and expertise, constantly innovating and improving to bring the future into focus. Science prepares us for the challenges of the future. We saw that with COVID. 
In less than a year, we went from the discovery of the virus to emergency use vaccine authorization from the FDA. The speed was extraordinary and based on 60 years of science. Because scientific discovery isn't often instant, hard work and dedication are required to produce results. But when that happens, it can be world changing. At OIST, we have already shown what we can achieve in just 10 years and we have a long future of excellence ahead. As the science philosopher, naturalist, politician Francis Bacon said in more skilled words several hundred years ago, science should make the world a better place to live in. And this is my ultimate expectations of the scientists at OIST. We work for the advancement of knowledge for the benefit of humanity. Yeah, the crucible of science and culture. Yeah, there are so many different disciplines, there are so many different cultural backgrounds. They came here and worked together. Even though I could have done this anywhere in the world, I feel like doing it here at OIS made it special and made it easier. Ten years from now, I hope it can continue to be successful and continue to grow without losing that special identity that it has. It's changing my life. <laughs> OIS. Join us for the future. He needs no introduction, but I still have the pleasure of introducing Peter Gruz, President and CEO of OIST, so he may welcome us and share his reflection on the anniversary. Welcome, Dr. Gruz. Welcome, honored guests. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the 10th anniversary of OIST. Whether you are here on our beautiful campus or joining us online from your home around the world, welcome from politics. Prime Minister Kishida via video, he will come momentarily. Speaker Hosoda, Minister Nishime, Governor Tamaki, Mayor Nagahama, parliamentary representatives, assembly members. From the business and academic communities, Suntory CEO Takeshi Ninami. Welcome to the Board of Governors, including Chair Cherry Murray and Vice Chair James Heger. Members of the Board of Councillors with Chair Albrecht Wagner. Welcome President Emeritus Dorfen and René Dorfen. Colleagues and friends, the OIST community, welcome to all of you. Watching the previous mu uh, video just a moment ago reminds us what journey OIST has made, what journey we have made over the past 10 years. The journey started with a man and an idea. It was a bold idea one that many people considered an unrealistic dream. But as we see today, the dream is in motion. This miracle occurred through inspiration, boldness, trust in people, and readiness to invest. The man with the idea was an influential and seasoned politician, Kojiomi. On April 14th this year, Mr. Omi passed away at the age of 89. As we mourn his death, we also know that we will never forget his accomplishments. We are very grateful 
to be joined today by his daughter and member of House of Representatives, Asako Umi. Oist honored his legacy in 2018 when Mr. Omi was the first person to receive an honorary doctoral degree at our very first graduation ceremony. More than 10 years ago, Omi understood that he needed more than a bold idea. To make his vision a reality, he needed the best and the brightest, the most influential in their fields, and the most pioneering of individuals. He traveled the world to gather Nobel Prize laureates and world-renowned science managers who could help him shape this vision. The vision, as you all know and support, is an international world-leading university in science, education, and innovation in Okinawa. The goal that we all work, are working toward is to transform the science and innovation system nationally, as well as the economic system locally. Through OIST, Okinawan standards of living should be brought into line with that of the people on the mainland. I'm delighted that two people from the pioneering group of visionaries are here in this room with us today, Kiyoshi Kurokawa and Tim Hunt, to this day researcher and mentor here on campus. As we celebrate together, we want to commemorate two other outstanding individuals who could not be with us today. Akito Arima, who passed away in 2020, and Sidney Brenner, who we lost in 2019. Arima was a world-renowned scientist, politician, and leader in science management who knew what Japan desperately needed in OIST. Sidney Brenner was a Nobel Prize laureate and was the OIST Promotion Corporation's founding president, establishing the key principles that shape our university today. We will treasure their legacies. OMI man managed to inspire these two leaders along with outstanding scientists and brilliant minds from around the globe to join him to bring his vision to life. They knew it had to be an international environment. It had to have a cross-disciplinary approach in science and education. It had to be without the traditional borders of departments. And it had to invest in people through high trust funding. They looked to build this vision in Okinawa rather than in Tokyo or in the west coast of the United States. Everyone knew that science and education could change living conditions in Okinawa, and everyone understood that this should be the place to build a university from ground up. Omi also worked very closely with Hiroyuki Hosoda, now the Speaker of the House, making a powerful team. And together, they overcame another critical hurdle. They showed the government of Japan how important it was to invest in this vision, and they also gathered essential support from the governments of Okinawa and Onason. The enthusiasm of creating a new kind of university of providing science with a new platform and of doing it here in Okinawa was infectious. An idea sparked by one person became a mission for us all. 
I will never forget my first visit to OIST when I was invited by the Board of Governors Presidential Search Committee. The spark was instantaneous. Since then, I've had the pleasure of watching people come to us as visitors and leave OIST as supporters and friends. Please ask yourself, why do you work for OIST as Board of Governors or Board of Councillors, members of the OIST Foundation? Why do you get involved in fundraising? As business leaders, why do you engage with us? Why is innovation uh, part, uh, the innovation part essential? Why do you, graduate students, postdocs, principal investigators, trust OIST with your career? For example, think of Professor Kenji Doya, some 20 years ago, joining us in the preliminary Uruma labs. This was before we were an accredited university. He could not know if this was the beginning of a great institution or a dead end for his outstanding career. What made him join? I believe the answer is this. We are all convinced of OIS's vision. To bring it to life is our mission. What you witness today is the result of the outstanding work and dedication of many. I'd love to thank you all of you personally who have contributed for, uh, with your trust. I want to thank you for your support and hard work, but time allows only a summarily expression of gratitude. The Japanese government. Earlier this week, Prime Minister Kishida honored Oist with a visit to our campus. Today, he sends his strong support by video, as we will see later. The Okinawan government, the Okinawan Promotion Council, the Japanese taxpayers, this community here in Okinawa, especially in Onason. I would also like to extend my gratitude to leaders of the scientific community supporting OIST early on. Former president of the Royal Society and Nobel laureate Venki Ramakrishnan could not be with us today in person due to COVID-related travel challenges, but he shared his keynote address through a video, which we will see later. Also, many individuals, Jonathan Dorfen, my predecessor, designed the transition of OIST Promotion Corporation to a graduate university. His tenure was marked with many firsts, including welcoming the first students on campus, Together with his wife, Renee, Jonathan shaped the lives of many individuals. In establishing the new graduate university, Jonathan was joined by our first dedicated and enthusiastic executives. Many of uh, uh, them are here today. I see former Vice CEO, Bob Bachmann, former Dean and Senior Advisor, Ken Peach, and former Vice President John Dickinson, Neil Calder, and Marquis Kubo. I also like to thank our colleagues on the Board of Governors, colleagues on the Board of Councillors, my current executive team of Vice Presidents, Deans and Advisors, graduate students and postdoctoral researchers, technicians, research support specialists and staff scientists, faculty, and all administrative research staff some of whom have been with OIST since the very first day as a, a research unit in U Uruma, while most others joined our journey more recently. Thank you all so very much. You were part of history because you made history. You were instrumental in so many positive developments in science, in education, in innovation, in the life of our community. You are the OIST family. As the OIST community, we enjoy watching the little ones in our child development center. They grow up speaking at least two languages 
and being at home in at least two cultures on a campus with the United Nations of Science and Education. Rene and Jonathan, thank you so much for laying the groundwork for the Child Development Center. As a family, we reach out to our neighbors. I believe Nobel Prize laureate Jerry Friedman was the first person who went to Okinawa school to teach students about the wonders of science. Many others, from Nobel Prize laureates to graduate students, followed his example. Every year, we stretch into local schools and we welcome Okinawans to our campus. As a community, we honor all who belong and once belonged to us. We were shocked and saddened when we lost staff member Shohei Suzuki in an incident in the service of duty. We mourned his death and, with the help of his family, set up the Shohei Suzuki Research Safety Fund. As we move forward together, we are striving to develop and improve on every level. As scientists, innovators, as administrators, and community members. Over the past 10 years, our result in science and education have built the necessary basis for technology transfer. Science and technology are intertwined and together they fuel incremental and breakthrough innovation. Now as we look to the future, we know to fulfill our vision, it is time to ambitiously broaden our commitment to innovation. We are working on two goals. First, we are expanding our innovation partnership to facilitate the translation of OIST research from intellectual properties into products and services. Second, we are attracting entrepreneurs to develop their startups at OIST and co-create the innovation ecosystem in Okinawa. It is the quality of our science and education, the soft landing portal and business support and the partnerships with venture capital firms and the OIST Venture Fund that attract young entrepreneurs with the ambition to launch their business in Japan and expand globally. One of the startups, EF Polymer, was awarded the Green Startup of the Year 2002 in Japan. As the number of startups grow, we need to build a second incubator and subsequently together with our public and private partners from industry, business and government, set up an Okinawan dis innovation district in the proximity of OIST. Today, as we celebrate the past and look to the future, we also know that we have arrived at a crossroad we received two excellent 10-year reviews recently. Both panels stated that OIST needs to grow to achieve its vision. The reason is clear. Cross-disciplinary work needs a critical mass in different disciplines to allow for the breakthroughs that happen at the interface of scientific disciplines. Yet now, instead of growing, we are faced with a re reduced budget and an unclear future. The economic cost of COVID pandemic, the geopolitical and economic shock waves of Russian invasion of Ukraine, and the global economy shaken by disrupted supply chains are putting a strain on Japan and the world. But if we read these events as a reason to reduce funding, 
we read them very wrong. On the contrary, this is the time to be courageous. This is the time to invest in the future. This is the time to secure the essential competitive advantage we find in science, technology, and innovation. Japan's shrinking talent pool needs an influx from around the world. Japan needs to attract venture capital and prepare the ground for entrepreneurs. Japan's industry sector needs new startups and digitalization. That's why OIST was founded and developed in the first place. I'm daring to hope, as the Prime Minister indicated, that our government wants to invest. At the ceremony of the 50th reversion of Okinawa to Japan last Sunday, Prime Minister Kishida said he will, quote, promote world-class education and research at OIST and will provide strong support to ensure that the results of research benefit our society, unquote. Further, he stressed, the importance of high-value industries, entrepreneurialism, and a startup ecosystem. Yes, this is our purpose and destiny. But to be candid, this will not happen if we freeze OIST at the current size. This by no means is sustainable. We need to grow to fulfill our vision and we need the financial means to do so. At OIST, we are committed to diversifying funding sources and raising third-party and private funds. However, the main share needs to come from the government because basic research lays the groundwork of all inventions and our stable financial support provides the seeds we need and innovation needs. My colleagues and friends, many, maybe all of you who are with us today in Japan and around the globe have believed in OIS vision from the start. The government of Japan started to invest in OIS when it was little more than a promise. Today we are proud that we have fulfilled that promise and exceeded expectations scientifically. This has been possible thanks to all of those in the OIST community from the very beginning to now. Tomorrow, we must continue our journey. Imagine OIST in 20 years. Imagine our university with 200 or 300 faculty, double and triple the 85 of today. Imagine the impact of those faculty and of the around 500 graduate students they will guide. Over 2,000 employees will be working and discovering. Imagine the beacon that OIST will be on the international scientific map, contributing to solutions for our planet's most challenging problems, fostering the next generation of science and technology talents, creating Japanese and international entrepreneurs through incubator and accelerator programs, and attracting venture capital innovators and entrepreneurs to Okinawa. Imagine the first phase of the innovation park where people will live, work, and play. Imagine this campus with sustainable features and a vibrant mix of local and diverse cultures offering jobs, housing, education, and well-being for a community of several thousand people. We know that if OIS effort to seed an innovation ecosystem is supported, the GDP per capita of Okinawa will be boosted significantly. With 10 high-quality jobs at OIST, we can generate more than 20 others. The direct and indirect economic impact from OIST, OIST-affiliated startups, 
business support services and tax revenues together is estimated to generate substantial employment and fill a significant fraction of the gap in GDP between Okinawa and the rest of Japan. We need to seize this opportunity to fill that gap and bring more prosperity to Okinawa. My dear friends, today Oist's vision is just a few steps away. I implore you not to give up, not to accept the current stagnation and cutbacks in investment. Why? Because realizing Oist's vision means the most significant game-changing impact possible on Okinawa. Today, as we remember the vision and drive of those who made an idea a reality, we must be just as ambitious and inspirational. We need your support to let OIST become what it always has supposed to be, a beacon of research, a facilitator of education, and a driver of economic development in Okinawa. Join us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Gruz, for your inspirational words. Thank you for welcoming us into the OIS community and giving us much to think about. Thank you very much. So we are very fortunate to have a number of special guests who wish to provide their best wishes. First, I would like to draw your attention to the screen to see a message from the Prime Minister of Japan, Fumio Kishida. オイストの創立10周年記念式典にあたり内閣総理大臣として祝辞を述べる機会を得たことを大変光栄に思います。え、式典にご出席の皆様、またこれまでオイストの創設や発展にご尽力されてこられた皆様、創立10周年誠におめ
ノーベル賞受賞者等の著名な方々が参画され世界的なネットワークが生かされていますさらには企業との共同研究やスタートアップ創出といった産学連携も深まりつつあります引き続きこれら5つの理念を追求しさらなる高みを目指していただきたいと思います我が国は今大きな時代の転換期を迎えています私は新しい資本主義を提唱しており経済の付加価値創出力を引き上げるとともに持続可能な経済社会を実現していくことが大切であると考えています社会における課題解決を成長のエンジンへと押し上げていくため最も重要なのは科学技術イノベーションスタートアップ人への投資グリーンデジタルの4本柱でありこの4本柱を体現している機関がここオイストであります世界的なネットワークを生かし量子バイオ等の先端科学技術をはじめ幅広い分野にかかる世界最高水準の教育研究が進められその研究成果が社会に広く還元されることを大いに期待していますぜひとも沖縄ひいては日本におけるイノベーション推進やスタートアップ創出を牽引する存在となっていただきたいと思いますこうしたオイストの取り組みを政府としても人材育成や資金支援などあらゆる政策リソースを投入してしっかりと支援してまいります結びに平素よりオイストの運営や教育研究にご尽力されている皆様に敬意を表するとともに日頃からオイストにご理解とご協力をいただいているご来賓の皆様に感謝を申し上げ私の祝辞といたします。Thank you, Prime Minister Kishida, for visiting OIS last week and for sending your best wishes today. Now, please welcome the Speaker of House of Representatives. Hiroyuki Hosoda to share his wishes for OIST. As I have been said, I tested at the Haneda Airport for COVID. Before flying to Okinawa, I think that's the minimum obligation we have to fulfill uh, for Okinawa. So that's why I am speaking without face mask. At the 10th anniversary of OIST, it is my great honor to say a few words. As we look back the journey toward the opening of OIST in 2011, the late Mr. Koji, Koji Omi, who passed away last month, and his contribution deserve our attention. Mr. Koji Omi played a main role in establishing the science and technology basic law in 1997. He led the science and technology policy in Japan for a long time. In 2001, when he was Minister of State of Okinawa and the Northern Territories Affairs and Minister of Science and Technology, he proposed establishing an international graduate university. He made efforts for the vision and the development of OIST. I am very sad Mr. Omi is not here with us 
but I believe he is happy to see today's oyst more than anyone else. After him, I took the position of the ministers. During that time, the location was chosen to be on a village. Dr. Jerome Friedman from Massachusetts Institute of Technology was invited to be the chair of the Basic Plan Implementation Council, and Dr. Sidney Brenner from Salk Institute for Biological Studies was invited to be the vice chair. I remember those discussions. Then I served as a chair of Alliance, the Alliance of Diet Members for the Future of OIST. As I assumed the position of a Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Kizaburo Tokai will be an acting. The Alliance looks the role of OIST in the development of Okinawa and Japan and discuss how that vision can be realized. In November 2011, OIST was founded. I am delighted to be here as a Speaker of the House of Representatives at the 10th anniversary. In 2019, the Nature Index ranking showed among Japanese research institutions, OIST ranked 9. The success of OIST gives me a great pleasure. I am more than delighted to see the success. In Okinawa, there is a saying, bridging nations. This saying has become a reality in this modern world where OIST continues to be the venue for global interactions and the foundation of the intellectual clusters in Okinawa. I would like to see OIST continues to contribute to the science and technology through its research researchers. Before I finish, I would like to express my deep appreciation to those who have made this cer ceremony possible amid COVID restrictions. I wish health and prosperity to all of you here. May 22nd, 2022, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Hiroki Hosoda. Congratulations. Thank you very much for your support over the years, Mr. Hosoda. Next, we are pleased to have with us. Next, we, we are pleased to have with us the Minister of State for Okinawa and Northern Territories Affairs, Kosaburo Nishime. Minister Nishime, welcome. この度はオイストの Congratulations on the 10th anniversary of OIST. It is because of those who worked hard to build and develop OIST, including President Gruss and former presidents and the OIST community and Okinawa Prefecture that we celebrate this day. As a diet member elected from Okinawa, I have watched the process of making OIST with keen interest since the very beginning. In 2001, Koji Omi, then Okinawa minister, proposed the idea of creating Best in the World University here in Okinawa. He pushed forward to make it happen with his enthusiasm. Dr. Akito Arima, the former president of the University of Tokyo, and other scholars joined this process, sharing OIST guiding principles. OIST owes its success to their contributions, to which I pay my deep respect. And here I offer my deep condolences to these two great figures. 
Since the early days, OIST attracted best faculty and students from around the world, making outstanding achievements in research that caught attention from academia of Japan and the world. OIST research and education have been cross-disciplinary and highly advanced, with biology and AI to name a few, and unique studies on renewable energy and marine science to make the best of Okinawa's characteristics. Recently, Japanese government focused on quantum studies. Last month, at Cross Ministerial Strategic Innovation Promotion Meeting, OIST was designated as one of the centers of innovation on quantum technology with high expectation for further progress in this research field. More people from various fields are watching how OIST contributes to promotion of Okinawa. Startups are springing to life with OIST research outcomes during the past 10 years. I hope OIST collaboration with businesses will be further enhanced so that people of Okinawa would find more value in OIST. I'm charged with making a strategy for economically viable Okinawa. I believe innovation is the key, and innovation will be born out of industry-academia collaboration in science and technology. OIST is doing basic research. Having said that, I highly expect that OIST will make best use of its high standard research to form innovation ecosystem to become a growth engine in Japan. The government of Japan will continue support for improving research environment for OIST. Lastly, with my all respects and gratitude for all those who worked hard for development of OIST and with my pride of hosting OIST here in Okinawa, I wish OIST further prosperity. With this, I'd like to close my remarks. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Nishime, for joining us today and sharing in the celebration. Next, we are fortunate to have here the governor of Okinawa, Deni Tamaki. Hello, everyone. How are you? Good afternoon. As the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology is celebrating its 10th anniversary, I would like to extend my congratulations to all those who supported Okinawa Institute of Technology and Science. In 2001, then Minister of State for Okinawa and Northern Territories Affairs and the Minister in Charge of Science and Technology Policy, the late Mr. Koji Omi proposed establishing the world-class graduate university on, in Okinawa, which led to the OIST project. In 2005, the Nobel Prize laureate in Physiology and Medicine, Dr. Sidney Brenner, became the president of the OIST Promotion Corporation. At the 10th anniversary of OIST, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to the late Mr. Omi and Dr. Brenner for their significant contributions and legacy. During the past 10 years, OIS did researches such as cancer and Ebola virus, brain science and AI integration, the basic principles of world-class quality, flexibility, global collaboration, and industry academia cooperation have been realized to create innovations. It has 
become the world-class research and educational institution. OIST is giving confidence and a dream to children in Okinawa. Research internships and a science challenge are some examples of OIST initiative for children's education. If such efforts will continue, that will inspire children to study at OIST or contribute to the global society. Also, OIST does research on corals, Okinawa seaweed, and sea grapes genome analysis, Okinawa grown resistance starch rice, ocean based wave power generation. These researchers have great potential to contribute to the development of Okinawa. In the near future, the researchers at OIST will change our lives and contribute to the world peace and sustainable development. The great efforts by many have resulted in patents and papers. Today, OIST is recognized as a world-class institution. To compete with prominent institutions that foster numerous normal price laureates, I, will, I would like to see those, and our children or grandchildren will see OIST at the center of Okinawa we dream of. Okinawa and OIST have been moving forward together in these 10 years. And now OIST has become a part of Okinawa, share the same identity as friend, or dushigwa in Okinawan language, and is building the shared future as a family, or Yaninju in Okinawan language. Okinawa is celebrating the 50th anniversary of reversion to Japan this year. We have started our endeavor for the next stage. I hope OIST will not only become the global institute, institution, but also continue to be part of Okinawa to create a better future. I wish the next 10 years will bring more success to OIST and also health and prosperity to all OIST members and your families. May 22nd, 2022, Deni Tamaki, Governor of Okinawa. Congratulations. Thank you, Governor, for sharing your best wishes. OIST is very fortunate to be located in Onnasan. Next, the mayor of Anna, Yoshimi Nagahama, would like to offer his congratulations. Hello, everybody. Konnichiwa. On behalf of Onna Village, I would like to congratulate the 10th anniversary of Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. Located in Onna Village, which is the largest resort area of the island, OIST has attracted talents from all over the world with the best in the world research environment. It has led researchers of Japan and the world and contributed to promotion and self-sustaining development of Okinawa. I pay my deep respect and express my appreciation to hard work of President Peter Gruss, the former president and CEOs, and all the people concerned who built OIST today. Our village people have enjoyed exchanges with OIST in every August. Kids 
have been shown the fascinating world of science in easy-to-understand ways by voice students and researchers through Children's School of Science. They taught very kindly our kids about the fun of studies in pursuing science. An OIST community has been very active in socializing with the hosting community of Tancha through cultural exchanges, ball games, and get-together events. They have participated in and cooperated with us in our tourism events and festivals. They also organized regular beach cleaning activities in Tancha area nurturing friendship with the local community. At this time, I'd like to offer my heartfelt thanks to the OIST community for their contribution and friendship shown to Onna village. OIST announced that they successfully decoded genome of umibudo and mozuku seaweeds grown by the Onna Fisheries Cooperative. I believe this will improve the aquacultural technique and make fishery industry more stable. They have cooperated with us in our efforts to plant and grow corals in our ocean. It is our shared mission to keep protecting the beautiful sea of Onna. With my renewed determination, I will continue to work together with OIST to build a sustainable society with less burden on our environment. As OIST will recruit entrepreneurs and accelerate startups that will help promote local industry and community, I hope that this will give much impact on human resources development and job creation for local residents. I can foresee this village will be a university town that serves as a global educational hub. We will work harder to make our village even more attractive by making most of our diverse resources. In the end, I will end my remark with my deep respect to efforts made by all those concerned. I wish further success and prosperity of OIST. With this, I would like to close my remark. Thank you, and congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Nagahama. I know you and your colleagues are supporters of OIST. We are also very lucky to be joined today by Takeshi Ninami, CEO of Santoi Holdings, who will share his thoughts on OIST. Welcome, Mr. Ninami. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'm honored and humbled to speak at this important occasion of the 10th anniversary of OIST. I want to begin by saying congratulations to OIST and congratulations, Dr. Gruss, for your accomplishments in leading this special very special institution throughout its development. Under your capable leadership and management, OIST has already achieved great performance in a short time and is recognized by prestigious Nature Index 
of the top academic institution with world-class scientific research. When I was younger, I had thought about being a scientist, scientist, scientific major. My favorite subject was physics. <laughs> but I was not very good at the biology. I did not end up majoring in science as I decided I wanted to be a diplomat. I eventually studied business and went to work for Mitsubishi Corporation in global trading and investments. Now, I am pr proud that I can be involved with the OIST with my current capacity as a business person because I have always believed that the science and the business must partner together. We are embarking on never-ending journey together. This is a journey where scientific research at OIST, together with technology transfer and commercialization facilitated by business, can make Japan and the world safer, people's life better, and the planet's greener. This journey is full of complex challenges. Our future world is in flux, and it is fractured. Cross-country collaboration and people-to-people -people exchange have taken a huge hit due to pandemic-related trouble disruptions and the geopolitical tensions. Going forward, we'll need a long-term vision and a solution looking beyond a long-term, I mean, short-term results. We need a sense of urgency and we need to dream big. Japan has trained up world-class problem solvers over many decades. Innovation has been the bedrock of our economy and the driver of our businesses and the key source of our competitiveness. Over the past half century, Japan has built world-class companies in electronics and cars, not to mention our whiskey, <laughs> Santori whiskey. As we move into the fourth industrial revolution, Japan has focused on solving our domestic challenges and meeting the world's needs with advanced manufacturing and robotics. But at the same time, I fear that Japan is at the risk of losing its edge. It is a risk of losing the animal spirits that are crucial in energizing business activities, innovative ideas, and ultimately Japan's economic growth. Moreover, we now find ourselves at another critical juncture. Aging, aging demographics, public crisis, public health crisis, supply chain disruptions and fragmentation, and the sick planet these are complex issues, hitting the world and greatly affecting Japan's economy and our society. Our country needs to invest more in science and innovation and to train up the next generation of world-class problem solvers and scientific talent, both home ground, home ground and from the world. We need diverse minds, diverse ideas to unleash the innovative capacity of our institutions and of our nation. OIST plays a critical role in this never-ending journey to spearhead big dreams and big findings in science. The diversity of faculty and students and always the focus on results have contributed its 
historical success. Japan should take pride in this success of OIST. In fact, I believe other institutions in Japan can learn from OIST in terms of its openness to global talent, patient funding, and the freedom for scientists to do deep research. But still, OIST can and must do more. The next phase of OIST journey will take even more creativity and even more collaboration. OIST had the unique advantage of being in this special location of Okinawa. Here we are surrounded by the greatest treasures of nature and biodiversity. I know that scuba diving is one of Peter's hobbies, right? And this is one of the special things that first attracted him to come to Okinawa and the OIST. OIST must attract more talented scientists and researchers from Japan and the around the world who care deeply about these treasures and who want to create impact throughout science. OIST is uniquely positioned to focus, focus on great challenges of the coming decades where science holds a promise. Environmental science focused on land and ocean biodiversity. Genomic science to improve physical and mental health and well-being. And deep tech and artificial intelligence to enhance human work and lives. These are just a few of many significant areas where OIST can excel. My dream is that OIST will not only lead in the scientific research domain, but also the actualization of research findings and the commercialization of innovations. My teams at Santori have engaged in collaborative research in several areas with OIST, where we hope to make impact, like developing basic aging technology by analyzing how yeast reacts to exogenous stress. Using consumer biometric data to build a machine learning model for studying behavioral changes that leads to healthier lives and looking at the effects of food ingredients on human aging makers, markers. And this is just the beginning. We'll do more together. Sometimes PhD get asked the question, what will you do after your PhD? I hope we can help provide the answer to the question by deepening collaboration and paving the way from campus to commercializations, we will have to work together to bring more entrepreneurs and the venture capital to invest in more startups to transform scientific findings into real, real world applications. I envision an Okinawa Silicon Valley that attracts young, young scientific and entrepreneurial talent to create startups, where OIST acts as a center for scientific excellence. Similar to how other world-class world research universities, like Caltech, like Stanford, they act as research powerful houses for Silicon Valley in the United States. But, it will also be different, more exciting kind of tech hub. If I may call it Okinawa Silicon Paradise, 
with the natural beauty, heritage, and the great scuba diving for you, Peter, with your friends. I envision a hub that brings together people of diverse backgrounds and cultures. Japan, Japan, Japanese academia is not exactly known for diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI. Oyster can be a role model to show the value that the DEI can bring to Japan's higher education institutions and the society. This journey, the journey itself to realize this vision will be a long one for OIST, but it will be worth it. As we think about better in connecting scientific research to the economy, we also have to create an ecosystem that benefits the local community in Okinawa. As growth and wealth increase, we have to ensure it does not only enrich a small group of people. While Silicon Valley is one of the top innovative hubs in the US and the world, it is also one of the most economically unequal parts of the US. A new tech hub in Okinawa should bring businesses and job opportunities lifting up the life, livelihood and the incomes of more people. Long-term plans should also include reinvesting some of the success back to Okinawa by improving the natural environment, physical and digital infrastructure, and the education system here. To conclude, I want to acknowledge that all of us here are big fans of OIST. Am I right? Yeah. I am a big fan of OIST, and I'm so glad you are too. I believe OIST plays a valuable and a strategic role that benefits the world, Okinawa, and Japan. While the journey ahead is challenging, it also holds so much promise. Let us dream big together with OIST. Let us build a sense of collective endeavor. Let us unite around the common challenges we face. Let us ask what we can do to support OIST's future as a beacon, as a hub of scientific excellence and business innovation that, generate, that generates broad-based, sustainable, and peaceful growth. I think we are all in it together. Am I right? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ninami, for your ongoing support of OIST. Thank you very much. Thank you to all of our speakers for their best wishes. It is with partners and supporters like you that we are able to bring our mission and vision to life. And we'll be able to continue to do so for the next 10 years and beyond. We have congratulatory messages. I would like to introduce a few from the member of House of Representatives, Mr. Fukushiro Nukaga. 
Congratulations on the 10th anniversary of ISK. I would like to celebrate this wonderful occasion together with you, and I wish for the further success and prosperity for all of you. Thank you very much for Mr. Fukushiro Nukaga, the member of House of Representatives. Next, we also have a message from Yoshihiro Seki, member of House of Representatives. I would like to congratulate the 10th anniversary of OIST. I pay my deep respect for hard work of all the people for the past 10 years. I wish you further success and prosperity and health and happiness for all people who gathered here. Environmental Committee Chairperson, House of Representatives, Liberal Democratic Party, Mr. Yoshihiro Seki, thank you. We also received a message of congratulations from Mr. Shigeru Fukui, President and CEO of Gojinsha Group. Thank you. Our keynote speaker couldn't join us today due to COVID restrictions, but he has graciously sent a video message Please direct your attention to the screen to hear from Dr. Benki Ramakrishnan, recipient of the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2009. Please, please watch a video from Dr. Benki Ramakrishnan. Hello. I'm Venki Ramakrishnan from the MRC Lab of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, England. I'm very sorry I can't be with you today, and this is largely due to the difficulties of traveling in the middle of a pandemic with COVID restrictions. Uh, but I hope to visit OIST at some point in the future, and I would like to express my congratulations uh, to OIST on the occasion of its celebrating its 10th anniversary. Uh, it's really a wonderful achievement uh, when you can build an institute of international caliber from scratch and uh, maintain it at that high quality. I'd like to share with you some thoughts today about the importance of investment in science and in particular in basic science of the kind uh, that is supported at OIST. Uh, so if you'll just give me a minute, I will set up a, a, a slideshow uh, that will take me through this talk. Okay, I'm going to start by showing you the fraction of the world's GDP by country over the last few hundred years. And what you can see is that if you look at uh, around 1700, the world's GDP was dominated by India and China. And Europe had uh, quite a small fraction of the world's GDP, uh, less than about 10%. And you can see Japan, uh, again, had quite a small uh, fraction. But as you go towards the 1800s into the 1900s, you see that the fraction of the world's GDP that uh, is Europe uh, starts to increase. And you look at uh, the United States, it starts dominating in the early 20th century and then throughout the 20th century. Now you can see that China uh, has an increasing fraction over the last 20 years, and this, uh, is, uh, this table only ends around uh, 2005 or so, and Japan had a larger fraction of the world's GDP in the 60s and 70s uh, than it does today. So the point is that the wealth of a country depends on knowledge and innovation. People have often 
asked whether colonization was the reason why Europe became wealthy. But you have to remember that the richest countries in Europe, like Sweden, Switzerland, and Germany, had almost no colonies. On the other hand, countries like Spain and Portugal had very large numbers of colonies, but were among the poorest countries in Europe per capita. So rather, the wealth is due to two reasons. One is trade, but of course, colonization can allow you to force uh, favorable terms on trade. So there is an indirect effect there. But the biggest effect is from science, innovation, and technology. And the point is that knowledge is much more important uh, than any of the other factors, including natural resources. For example, uh, if you look at Africa or, or even Russia, they are not doing as well per capita, even though they have huge natural resources, compared to Japan, Switzerland, or, or Singapore, which have very few natural resources, but are extremely knowledge rich and technology rich. The other thing you can look at is the GDP through history. This fraction of GDP doesn't tell you the real story. The real story is that the overall GDP of the world has exploded. Uh, if you look in the first you know, 6,000 years since of history, GDP just barely doubled. But then since 1500, it's been doubling almost every 60 years. And so it's an explosive growth in GDP due to uh, science and technology. Now, this actually translates not just into wealth, but also well-being. If you look at the life expectancy throughout history, for many thousands of years, our life expectancy hardly changed. Uh, ever since agriculture, it's really not changed at all until you get uh, science and the Industrial Revolution and suddenly life expectancy starts going up and it's almost doubled in the last uh, 150 years. And you can see that uh, poorer parts of the world, including Africa, are also catching up as the knowledge and technology uh, of, for how to uh, you know, avoid infant mortality, etc., uh, has spread throughout the world. Now, basic science, as you can see, has brought tremendous benefits to the economy. Life expectancy has doubled, but you, it's also a great triumph of human understanding. For example, we know about the origins of the universe, uh, to how biology works. And the point is that virtually every product you can think of has basic science that underpins its in development. I mean, the standard thing is that even a thing like a smartphone has several Nobel Prizes that went into the fundamental science behind even a, a device like the smartphone. And science and innovation lead to entirely new industries. For example, many of the top companies uh, today uh, didn't exist 50 years ago, but not only that, even their industry didn't exist 50 years ago. For example, Google or or Microsoft or Apple, those industries did not exist 50 years ago. And another thing that you might want to keep in mind is it's commonly thought that basic science leads to applied science, which leads uh, to technology, but that's not actually true. It's rather a complicated intertwined web where they feed off each other, for example, Quantum theory is from fundamental physics, but that led to the development of transistors and lasers, which led to the development of computers and new devices and instruments. But those computers and new devices also drive new fundamental science. So it's a very complicated web and a sort of circular uh, benefit. And um, the other thing is that basic science can lead to uh, technology much, much later. For example, Newton's laws of motion led to satellites, which came 300 years later. And Einstein's theory of relativity, which was done in 1905 and 1915, led to the development of GPS uh, almost 100 years later. Now, Einstein would have been very surprised to find out that the theory of relativity was being used to locate yourself 
using your phone in your pocket. A recent example is the development of the World Wide Web, which was used to share data between high energy physicists. And that development led to an explosion in the, in the use of the internet. And uh, today we do our shopping and travel and banking and all sorts of things, uh, you know, watch movies, uh, all using uh, the World Wide Web. I'm going to give you a recent example about the interaction between uh, basic science and human technolo technology and human benefit. And that's the coronavirus pandemic. So here's a picture of how uh, coronavirus attacks our cells. And you can see that there are proteins called the spike proteins on the surface of our cells. And they attach to a receptor on the surface of our own cells. And so when the spike protein from the coronavirus attaches to this ACE2 receptor, that allows the coronavirus to enter our cells. And once it enters our cells, it can open up and the RNA genome of the virus is spilled inside our cells. And that RNA genome allows the virus to replicate and make lots of copies of itself. And then these copies can leave the original cell and go on to infect other cells. And that is how an infection spreads inside our body and then causes disease. Now, the fundamental point of attachment of coronavirus, the initial point of attachment, is using the spike protein to attach to the ACE2 receptor. So if you can somehow block the spike protein from attaching to that receptor, you will prevent the coronavirus from entering our cells. It won't be able to replicate and multiply, and so it won't be able to cause disease. And that's precisely the idea behind uh, the vaccines. So what was done was the coronavirus genome, the RNA genome was sequenced and they found a stretch of the genome which coded for the spike protein. And then they were able to make the RNA just corresponding to the spike protein and introduce that into our cells. It's called messenger RNA. It's read by uh, molecules in our cells called the ribosome, which I've uh, personally worked on, uh, to make the spike protein. And the spike protein is then uh, displayed on the surface of the cells uh, where this RNA was introduced. Now, when these spike proteins are, are displayed on the surface, our immune system recognizes them. It makes antibodies against them, and uh, it also makes T cells which recognize if the, any cell has been infected, uh, which shows uh, the spike protein. And so effectively, we've immunized our cells to recognize this spike protein when it comes along. And so when coronavirus infects, uh, we are prepared, our immune system is prepared uh, to, to react to it. And, and by preventing the spike protein from attaching to our cells, we're preventing coronavirus infection. Now you might think this is amazingly fast because it was only in December 2019 that the first cases of pneumonia in Wuhan were identified. And then a week or so later, SARS-CoV-2 was identified as the causative virus for uh, causing that pneumonia. And then only a few days later, the genome uh, of SARS-CoV-2 was sequenced. People-to-people -people transmission was confirmed a few days later. And then fast forward 10 months, and you have the first person uh, being given a coronavirus vaccine. And this is a, a picture of this person in the UK who received the COVID-19 uh, RNA vaccine from Pfizer. Now, you might think this is amazing uh, how fast it is, but actually it was built on decades of basic science. For example, even to identify the virus, you needed centuries of epidemiology and understanding how infectious disease spreads. You needed over a century of virus research, including 
research on previous coronaviruses like SARS, uh, which allowed you to understand that the spike protein was important uh, for infection. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know which protein to target. And compare that with the Spanish flu of 1918, uh, when we also had a worldwide pandemic and millions of people died. At that time, uh, we barely knew what viruses were and we knew almost nothing about the influenza virus. And the, certainly we couldn't have such a rapid uh, scientific response uh, to the uh, 1918 pandemic. So if you look at what went into the response to the pandemic, for example, sequencing the virus, it was done only in a few days, but that was developed over decades. For example, Fred Sanger uh, in Cambridge showed how to sequence DNA for which he won the 1980 Nobel Prize. And the fast next generation way of sequencing that we all use, including for coronavirus, was developed by these two people, Bala Subramanian and Klenerman, also here in Cambridge, for which they shared the 2021 breakthrough prize. Now, even detecting whether you have a COVID infection requires tests and the most common sensitive test, uh, PCR test, which by the way is required to enter Japan or even to fly to Japan, uh, was made possible by people who were looking at bacteria that grew in hot springs. It was not, they were curious, why would bacteria be able to tolerate such high temperatures, for example, in Yellowstone National Park or in the Izu Peninsula in Japan. And that's what led to the PCR test. And similarly, the LFD, the rapid antigen test, was developed on decades of understanding antibody antigen reaction and how to make antibodies and how to give, uh, make a color reaction to them and so on. Now, you look at vaccine development, uh, introducing this mRNA, uh, into cells depended on our understanding that mRNA would be translated into protein. And that was done by the discovery of ribosomes and mRNA around 1960. And of course, as I mentioned, identifying the spike protein as a target was done with SARS around uh, 2007. The mRNA can't just be, you can't just inject mRNA into a person, it'll never get into any cells. Rather, it needs to be encapsulated in these lipid particles. And these lipid particles then fuse with our cells and introduce that mRNA uh, into our cells. And that depended on 50 years of development, you know, development of liposomes, and then how to make formulations of liposome with RNA, and then to test whether you can deliver mRNA into cells using these lipid nanoparticles. All of that was done before we even had a a COVID pandemic. And even to make RNA, you need kilograms, actually tens of kilograms of RNA to deliver, you know, these billion doses of vaccines. And that was done by figuring out that a, a virus that attacks bacteria has a very efficient way of making RNA using its own enzyme called T7 RNA polymerase. And that was done by Bill Studier and John Dunn in the 1980s. Again, fundamental science long before uh, this pandemic. And the final thing is that the RNA needs to have modified bases. And that uh, was discovered by uh, these two people, Carrico and Weissman, who shared the uh, Breakthrough Prize in 2021. And uh, without that, the mRNA would be uh, rapidly degraded and we would react to it. And so that was another uh, essential thing, again, lo done long before uh, the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, I hope you realize that the rapid technological and medical uh, uh, response to the pandemic was really built on decades of fundamental science that had nothing at all to do with the pandemic. And so it's going to be the same in the future. Future prosperity will depend on innovation. You can't depend on cheap labor to drive growth. Of course, Japan is not a cheap labor country, but there are many countries that think that you could become wealthy that way, uh, but it's no longer going to be possible because of automation and robotics. 
you know, you can't compete based on labor. I've already pointed out you can't compete based on natural resources. The only way you can compete on is using knowledge and innovation. And there are many fundamental problems that we need to solve. For example, food security, uh, sustainable energy, health. Uh, and in health, I might point out that Japan is an aging society. And aging is a very fundamental, multifactorial, complex biological problem, which is going to require a lot of fundamental biology to understand uh, what the problems are, why we age, and what we could do about it to stay healthy. Now, if you look at the uh, spending on uh, research and development uh, by country as a fraction of GDP, then you see Japan seems to be doing fairly well. You know, 3% of GDP, uh, it's above many of these other uh, countries. But this figure is slightly misleading because Japan has lots of large uh, multinational conglomerates, you know, Hitachi, Sony, Mitsubishi, uh, you know, Honda, etc. And these companies invest a lot in R&D, but that R&D is highly targeted. It is not mostly the fundamental science which results in breakthroughs of the future and, and develops entirely new technologies. If you look at government spending in Japan, it's very low. So for example, in green is shown the spending in Japan, it's less than half uh, of what the UK uh, spends uh, in, in government spending. And that's the part of the spending that's really important for uh, driving basic science. And as a result, if you look at Japan's publication output, uh, there's a lot of uh, science in Japan that's very high quality, but if you look at the total output, uh, it is not as competitive uh, as uh, the rest of the world. And so, um, and you can see that the relative change is in the wrong direction uh, in, in many different fields. You might ask, why should a country invest in fundamental science rather than use discoveries that are made elsewhere? For example, in the early days of its development, the United States simply took discoveries that were made in Europe and, and, and simply applied them. And, and, and that's how the United States got wealthy. Simply, similarly, Japan did something very similar in the 50s and 60s. It used uh, discoveries made elsewhere like the transistor or the laser and applied them and, and developed its uh, economy. And China uh, did that uh, quite a lot since uh, 1989, although China is now investing uh, heavily in basic science. The problem is you can't do that forever. And the other problem is that the countries that make the fundamental discoveries have a huge advantage. For example, there's a so-called first mover advantage. If the discovery is made somewhere, then the people around that uh, place are, are the first people to hear about it and they're going to be the first people to exploit it. And so it's not uh, an accident that the big technological engines in the West uh, have grown up around places where fundamental discoveries are made. For example, the Bay Area and Silicon Valley uh, are, have grown because of Stanford and Berkeley, or the Boston area has grown because of Harvard and MIT, or the largest uh, you know, tech, science and technology center outside of the United States is Cambridge in the United Kingdom. And that has grown up around the University of Cambridge and institutes like mine, uh, the MRC Lab of Molecular Biology. And so you need that local uh, interaction to be able to be the first to take advantage. And if you're the first, you always have uh, a built-in advantage. And similarly, there's a agglomeration effect. Once you get a lot of high-tech industries around uh, a certain area, then you get lots of skills, complementary skills, and it's easier to attract people, easier to start new companies, etc. And all of this innovation, therefore, 
requires a strong investment in basic science because that's what nucleated it in the first place. Well, thank you very much and uh, I wish you all a, a great celebration and I hope to visit Japan and the OIST at some point in the future. Thank you very much. Please give a big round of applause for Dr. Lama Krishnan. Thank you very much. So now we are nearing the end of the ceremony. I'd like to invite Eiko Kano and Karan Hakovian back on stage for a closing performance. Please approach the stage.
Thank you so much for another wonderful performance. Thank you very much. Subarashi and so deshita. Thank you very much. Arigatou gozaimashita. This brings us to the end of OIST 10th anniversary ceremony. Thanks to each of you for joining us from Onna, around Okinawa, throughout Japan, and around the world, both in person and online. In the meantime, we kindly ask that you please remain seated until our staff guide you to the exit. As you may know, sorry, as you may know, we had to cancel our post-ceremony reception due to COVID restrictions. Instead, we would like to invite you on a self-guided tour of part of the campus. After you exit the auditorium, please head to the right. A map is in your canvas bags, and staff and students are on the tour route to assist you. Once again, thank you for being part of OIST community and celebrating with us. Thank you very much. We kindly ask that you please remain seated until our staff guides you to the exit. Thank you very much. <laughs>